Hey everyone, I'm Stefan Batifo. I'm a developer advocate at Zillis, the creator and maintainer of Milvus. Today, I'm here to talk to you about how to use Milvus with LangServe and LangChain so you can actually create some production-ready API with your LLM agent. So LangServe uh, is part of the LangChain applications. It's open source, so you can use it, and it's really here to help you deploy you know, LangChain runnables and chains as a REST API. So it's using FastAPI and it's using Pydentic as well for data validation. You might be familiar with those if you work a lot with you know, production uh, ML models. So yes, we're going to use that. Uh, on top of that, we're going to use Milvus, the open source vector database that is built for developers. So it really helps you bring search to your Gen AI applications. You can start with a pip install on your laptop and then we also scale up to billions of vectors. If you don't have it installed yet, do a pip install by Milvus and if you don't know exactly how it works, feel free to check out our Get Started documentation. Well, also on GitHub, uh, we have the Milvis that is fully open source, so you can check it out. I would love if you were to give a star uh, for our project. It really helps us if you, if you actually like the demo that I'm going to show you today. We also have a bootcamp uh, where you can see like, all the different ways of dealing with unstructured data, but I'll come back to that later. Today, uh, I'm, as I said before, I'm going to build an intelligent application with LangServe, LangGraph, and Milvus. So Milvus is a high-performance vector database, and it runs, you know, it can run on your laptop, or then it can run on Kubernetes, or it can run in the cloud. Uh, I'm also going to use LangServe. Uh, that's then going to, you know, set up a fast API application with LangServe and LangGraph. And then I'm adding Milvus for the vector search and vector storage, and uh, I'm going to build an LLM agent with LangGraph. I'm going to use Olama with Llama 3. So yes, make sure you have Python 3 installed. Make sure you have Docker installed as well. Um, you can clone the repository that you have all the instructions in the readme. Uh, and then you can install all the dependencies. But let's have a look first. So I import all my files directly. You know, I'm like, I'm, so I'm going to use FastAPI. I'm going to use Pydentic. So I'm like importing all of those. I'm importing all the different dependencies for LangGraph. Uh, and same for LangChain as well. You know, like I'm going to use Olama, so then I'm importing Olama. Uh, I'm going to use some prompt templating, so it's the same. I'm importing the prompt template. Uh, I'm going to load documents from the internet, so web-based loader, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm using Milvus, so you see it here. Uh, I import it directly. So yes, this is the function that I defined, uh, which is here to load and split my documents. So. We give it a list of string, uh, and then it's going to return a list of documents. So this list of documents, uh, this is like a long chain document. And then, yeah, we loop through the list that we're going to give, uh, and then, you know, we're then going to iterate over it. We're going to split our text in chunks of 250. Uh, that's what we have here. It's not a golden rule, rule. Like, it's not 250 is the go-to. It's more like, for the sake of the demo, I've decided to go for 250. But it really depends on your context. It really depends on your documents. And it really depends on you. Uh, then I'm returning uh, all my chunks. Um, so yeah, that's what you have here. It's, I'm returning a list of documents. Then I have another function, uh, which is about adding documents to Milvus, to our vector database. So. It's here, uh, I have my Milvus you know, class, and then I'm importing from the documents that I have before, so from all the splits that I'm giving to the function. Uh, for the collection name, rag Milvus, with the embedding models that are defined, uh, and in this case, I'm using Hugging Face embedding models, the default one, and then different you know, connection arguments that I may have. Um, and then I return the Milvus as a retriever, and so then, Milvis can then retrieve all the documents uh, when you ask a question. I'm initializing the different components. So, you know, th those are the lists that I'm going to give to my function, which is loading and splitting the documents. Uh, I can show you. So, this one is a document about LLM powered autonomous agents. So, it's all about agents. You know, like what can you do with agents? So, like planning, memory, tool use. You know, you, you, see, the, you see the idea. It's all about agents. Uh, I have another one, uh, which is more about prompt engineering. But again, you know, it's still related to LLM. It's still related to prompts um, and everything. The uh, third one is about adversarial attacks on LLMs. So again, you know, it's related to LLMs. I won't go into details, but you get the idea. I'm splitting all my documents here. 
I'm loading my embedding models, and here I'm saying, please, for the connection arguments, use um, a local file. So I'm using milvis uh, underscore rag dot db, which means my, which means that milvis will use milvis lite, and then it means that everything will run on my laptop. Uh, then, if I were to you know scale up and actually go to production then Milvis would have to be deployed somewhere on Kubernetes or maybe you're using Zillis. Then we can just change the URI and then that's all you have to do. Like we don't have to change anything else. Then, you know, I'm like adding my documents to my retriever that I defined before and that's about it. Now, this is just the beginning prompt uh, that's just to help uh, set up everything. So it's just like your helpful assistant and then our user ourselves will put the inputs here. Uh, I'm using different templates, so different prompts. So there's one which is going to be retrieval grader prompt. So this one is really here to check, you know, if the answer you're giving to your user is relevant according to the question. So if the document is like, you know, it contains keywords that are related to the user question, then we're pretty happy. And otherwise, you know, we just filter it out. So that's what we're doing here. Then we're going to give it a binary score, yes or no, to just say, OK, that was actually relevant. I have another one, another function, uh, which is you know, checking if you're actually answering the question of the user. So again, you're saying you're an assistant for question answering task. And then please, uh, if you don't know the answer, just say you don't know. And otherwise, um, you know, use three sentences maximum and keep the answer concise. concise sorry. So that's like to checking. Um, if you can give an answer. Then we're also checking for hallucination. So, you know, you can check whether an answer is grounded in or supported by a set of fact that you may have in your documents. Uh, then we also have a routing system. So this one, you say you're an expert at routing and then you're going to route a user question either to a vector store like Milvis or AppSearch. Um, and then, you know, you're saying use the vector store, sorry, for questions that are related to LLM agents, prompt engineering, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And otherwise, uh, you will default to a web search. That's what you have here. Otherwise, use the web search. So, yes, I'm, as I said, I'm using Llama 3. Then I have different Llama running. Uh, so then there's one for the JSON format, one for the string format. But they're running the same model in the end. And then here I have my chains. So this one is a retrieval grader chain. So I'm going to call my function, which is retrieval grader prompt, which I showed you before. Then I'm going to call my LLM with the JSON output. And then I'm going to call the JSON output parser. Same for hallucination grader. Uh, I'm calling the hallucination grader prompt, LLM again, and then JSON, JSON parser. Same for my question router. It's, you know, we're routing the question. Uh, then we send, we send it to the LLM, and then we have a nice output. This is just a function to format the documents. Uh, and here is a rack chain. So you have the answer prompt, then you have your LLM, and then you know, you're going to pass uh, the, the output as a string. So I have one function here, which is called retrieve. And this one is basically going to retrieve, going to tell, going to tell our LM, sorry, our agent, to retrieve the documents if it thinks it should retrieve those. Those, this one is generate. So this one is here to help you generate some text if, you know, based on the question of the, of the user. And then depending on the question, then it will like generate some text if it had actually found something uh, in your documents. Let's say you ask a question about agent memory, then it might you know, generate you like three sentences about agent memory. We have one then that is like grading the documents. So this one is just make, making sure you know that the documents are relevant to the question. Then you have one which is web search, which is actually doing the web search. So you know, if you don't have your documents, uh, if you ask a question where, where you don't have documents in your vector database, then what we can do is we can do a web search. So here I'm using Tableau because it's a um, search engine for LLMs. Here is where I route the question. So, you know, if uh, the source data source is web search and otherwise we go into Milvis. We decide to generate or not. Uh, and then here we are going to grade our generation uh, against the document and the question. So we're making sure that, you know, what we generated uh, is actually good uh, and we actually answer the question. Here is just a Pydentic model that we're using. Uh, I'm initializing my FastAPI app. 
this is the graph that I'm going to use. You know, this is a graph state. So that's where you actually then, that's the land graph graph. So I have my question, I have my generation, web search, and then I have my list of documents. So here I define my graph. So, you know, it's a state graph. Um, and then I'm adding nodes. So for my nodes, uh, I'm adding like a web search node uh, with then, you know, like the web search that you define in the graph. Same for retrieve, uh, same for grade documents, and same for generate. Then you, you know, you, you're going to set some entry points. So the entry point is actually, you know, you're like going to route the question. That's, that's what you're going to start. You know, when you ask a question, you're going to decide either you go on the web search or either you do the vector store. Then, you know, you can add like some retrieval uh, and then decide to generate or not. And then you add uh, an edge which has a condition, you know. This one, you know, if it's if you like decide that it's not supported, then you're going to generate some text. If it's not useful uh, for like what the user asked, then you can do web search. But if it's useful, then you end. That's what you do here. Here is the end state uh, from Langraph, and here will actually tell your agent, okay, now we're happy. You can stop what you were doing. Now we're going to add a route, you know, to test that actually it's working. So this one is to generate some something. Uh, so then I'm going to take a question and then I'm going to answer it. And here, if you noticed, we added it to our first API route, which means that we, then we can make a, right, a REST call uh, and then we can actually, you know, like have an answer and then check everything. Here is what I'm defining. So if the name is main, you know, then I'm using Uvicorn to run the first API app. I'm running it on my local machine with a port uh, 5001. Uh, and that's about it. If you then, you know, really want to go into production, then you may want to use a Docker file. You know, it's a usual Docker file, I would say. So then you like import for Python. Then you install different things. You know, you copy the content. You expose the, the port that you need, and then you can run the same command as we did before, which is Python app.bi. I'm going to show you that actually what it looks like. You know, when you run it. So I'm going into my terminal. And I can show you, you know, like I have my Docker file, my app. This is the file uh, that I told Milvis, you know, to use. So then it created like a local file. Then I have the README and everything. So I'm going to run Python app.pi. You can see that, you know, like this is just a user agent for the internet. So we don't really care. Uh, I have a bit of warnings, but that's fine. Now, the, we're starting the application. You know, UVCon is running on 5001, so then we can check later once it's like started fully. It's a bit slow because, you know, you have like a lot of things to start. Uh, but then LangServe should be, should be up and running in a couple of seconds. So I go in my terminal, you know, and then I can show you what I have. So I have my local file, you know, which is what's, what Milvis is using to save the state and to save everything. I have my Docker file, which I've shown before, my Python file, uh, and then I can start it, you know, with Python. Let's see. So it's giving me um, a warning because I'm not using a user agent, but that's fine. Then it's another warning uh, about, you know, duplicated packages, but that's, it's all right as well. And then, then we wait, then Uvicorn is starting, and we can see that Uvicorn is running, you know, on, on my local machine for the port 501. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create another tab here, so you find it. Um, and yeah, here you can then run a curl, which is, you know, I'm like going into my machine, so port 501, uh, and then I'm asking a question, what is Langraph? You know, that's the question I'm asking. So then, actually, you can see it's routing the question, it's doing a web search, it's generating, and then it checks for hallucination. 
And then it gives me back my answer. And the answer is quite long. You know, we see it here. Uh, the question is, you know, what is Langraph? And then it's giving you an answer. So Langraph is a versatile tool for building complex stateful application with LLMs, blah, 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 blah. So you can see that's working. And that did a web search for us. Uh, you may have, you know, another question, which is, I don't know, uh, related to the documents that I've shown before. So what is uh, agent memory? Is something we've seen before in the document that I've shown. So let's see if it's actually working. So here we can see we're routing the question, uh, then we retrieve the documents. So when we retrieve it, we check directly into Melvis. We don't need to do a web search. We're checking if the documents are relevant to the question. We're grading the different documents that we have. Uh, and then, you know, we generate. And then we check for destination. If we don't have a destination, then we can return. Uh, it's quite verbose, so yes, the um, answer is here. So my question is, what is agent memory? And then, you know, it's really like giving you something. So then it's talking about like, the different agent. Um, it's telling you about relevance. It's telling you like you have it here. It's telling you about the importance. So, you know, to be being able to, to distinguish between different memories and recency as well. So, yeah, there you have it. You can now run LangServe with Docker directly in your cloud environment, or you can run it somewhere else. And now you can actually deploy it to production. Thank you very much for checking us out. Uh, check out melvis.io on the website if you have any questions. Also, feel free to check out our GitHub. Uh, so it's melvis-io slash melvis. Give us a star if you, like the, um, if you like the demo. Thank you very much, and have a good day. Bye.